Greetings YouTube and welcome to my latest weapons build. So I am once again going to use a baseball bat as the base for this build. I do love baseball bats. They're easy to acquire, they're cheap, and uh, they are very versatile. Now this is a very old bat. I've had this bat around for ages. Um, this I can tell because this 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 was rubber band I think or something that got stuck on there at one point and I remember keeping it around the house for the longest time this was like my only hand weapon in the entire home was this baseball bat um, a little, besides like you know knives folding knives and but back then I was not collecting knives like I do now uh, and recently my friend Jan asked me do I keep all my weapons or do I recycle them as like as in do I separate them by you know disassembly and then repurpose the uh, components and most of the weapons I build I build once and then I keep them um, there have been exceptions to that um, and there are going to be points in the future where I'm going to have to disassemble some of the weapons simply because I do not have space to store them all and some of my newer designs are far better far cooler and they're things I want to keep so some of the older ones which are very simple like some of the things I built out of black pipe um, I can disassemble because they would be very easy to recreate there's nothing unique about them it's all off-the-shelf components so I can reuse those off-the-shelf components in other builds um, and then clear up some space for storing the more unique weapons builds such as for example this one. Um, and I, by the way, you can see a hole in that bat. That, this is a reuse. I don't even remember what that hole is for. Honestly, I do not remember why I drilled that hole in this bat. There was a reason for it. I do not remember what that reason is. So it'll be reused. It's going to become something far cooler because I'm going to mount these things on that bat. Now, I don't know what these things are. If you look at it, you can tell there are two holes here. And then there's a, this stuff here is a hook. So obviously this was meant to hook on something and then it was meant to be attached here. But what? There are no marks on this. So these may have been like part of another component, you know, like this, this, these came along with some other device and they were supposed to be added to that device and they never were because obviously these things are, they're like new and they were, they were stored outside. So they are definitely weatherproof. The little bit of a weathering you're seeing on is because they were on a shelf outside, who knows for how long. Um, and I really like the way they look and they're gonna make something that's really dangerous. It's gonna be pretty heavy too. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount, whoops, I'm gonna mount each one on the bat like this. Now I want to use the holes that are already here because why reinvent the wheel? Why, why, drill new holes in this deal when I don't need to because I've got holes here. Now, to, to facilitate that, I'm going to take this center punch, which is designed for marking holes, and I'm going to be able to do this, which will mark me a hole with the center the same diameter as this lag bolt. So the lag bolt will sit in that exact spot. And once I mark the, the wood with this cone, because it's just a, a 45 degree cone, I will then brighten it up with that uh, my that all right there. It's my favorite all. I love that thing. And then I'm going to do two holes this way and then two holes that way, which means I can't use threaded rod, which is what I often use on builds. That's why I'm using lag bolts because the lag bolts are short enough. They will not meet in the middle. So, and if they do meet slightly, I can just grind the tips off so they don't touch. Um, all I really need is the, the, the threads to be engaged in the wood. And the one thing I have not done yet is figured out which drill bit I want to use for the holes. So I need to do that next because because the outside diameter is a quarter inch. That's what this is. And I don't want to use that obviously because it won't bite. So I'm going to find what's the next step down probably and that will do it. But four holes, this were two this way and two 90 degrees to that. Then bolt everything together and I'm done. It may take me longer to get my V block V channel in the drill press setup than to actually complete this project. It's going to be pretty straightforward. Um, and again, this is another example of a low tech weapons build. There's nothing here that's all that clump complex. Obviously, you're not just going to walk into a store and say, I'd like to buy these because I don't know what the hell they are. So you can't do that. But the point is, is that you can find things to bolt onto a bat that would allow you to make a functional, funky, 
post-apocalyptic vibe weapon at a low tech level entry point. Just a hand drill will do it. You don't need a drill press. Um, and even if I had to drill through this, I could still use a hand drill to drill through this steel because this type of steel is not hardened. So drilling through this with a hand drill is not going to be hard. Um, it will definitely help if you have a place to clamp this firmly if you don't have a vise. But a good set of clamps and like the railing of a porch or something, you can really do some good drilling. I've done that before. Um, I have built a number of projects before I had a shop down here right on the railing of my porch because I didn't have a workbench. Obviously, I do now. Um, so, like I said, this is a pretty low-tech entry point, even though the items may not be the easiest to acquire. Obviously, lag bolts are simple. And I've made Tetsubo-like clubs before with just drilling poles and putting lag bolts in there. In fact, I, put, I used lag bolts with nuts to kind of simulate a, an acorn nut, nut. And you can find that on my DeviantArt page. It's a, it's a Tetsu, Tetsubo-style baseball bat with lag bolts and nuts to simulate an acorn style uh, nut because they're more expensive than lag bolts and regular nuts. Um, so yeah, so that's what the project's gonna be. So the first thing is going to be to set up the V block on my drill press and then figure out what kind of drill I need to drill the diameter hole that I want so that the threads engage properly in the bat. Have you ever heard the saying measure twice, cut once? Well, here's an example of what happens when you don't. <laughs> so I marked the two holes exactly as I said I did. Use that center punch. Then I brightened the hole up, the, the mark with a uh, my awl. Beautiful, nice, sharp, and clear. I got to the drilling portion, and there was a divot right here. I don't know why the divot was there. I got no idea. Could have been there for the last 30 years. But I drilled a hole there when I don't need it. Doesn't matter. It will be completely covered up with the, with the bracket. But here's an example. I didn't drill the hole in the right place, that these two holes are where I want them. So now that I have these two holes in, I'm going to take this center punch, put it through here, then clamp one of the brackets on this. There's a whole shebang so I get it nice and perpendicular to each other so I then can then mark the other two holes because uh, I don't have any way of just turning it 90 degrees and then having it locked into position. So I'm going to use the smaller center punch through the hole and then put the bracket on there, and try to get everything at 90 degrees to each other. It won't be perfect, but it should be close enough for this project. Again, I am going for a post-apocalyptic vibe. If everything isn't down to like the 10th of a millimeter, I am okay with that. Accepting the fact that things will never quite be perfect will let you get far closer to perfect than trying to be perfect from the get-go. That may sound counterintuitive, but it is not. If you accept room for error, it will lower your anxiety and your stress, and you then will have a better chance of making something come out much closer to how you envisioned it. Alrighty. So now it's time to set the thing up. I'll probably take a picture of that real quick so I can show what I mean. Um, so I can then locate the next set of holes. So this is what I mean. I've got the whole thing clamped down to my bench so it won't move. So I can then make the marks here and here. And so it's not perfect, but it's very close. And that's what I want. I want very close. Um, so now I can make the two holes, well, not two marks. And then again, brighten them up with an awl, and then drill the two remaining holes, which I want, and I will use this to help me line up this hole perpendicular to the first set. And then when I have that hole done, I will remove this and put it here, and then line the vertical up with the drill bit and the drill press to drill this hole. It's a little complicated, but I don't have any kind of fixture. I haven't figured out how to build one yet. I have an idea for a fixture that would let me drill holes in a row. Because so I used to use one at my old job, but I have to figure out how I can make a version of it. Because I don't have the tools that my old job had. I'm not a machinist. And the machinist made this tool for me. Um, so I need to make my own version, but I have to figure out how I do that. So and I'm still working on that. I'll get there eventually. Um, so now this is set up, so now I can make the mark, brighten the mark with an awl, and then drill the last two holes, and then we can start assembly. 
So here I have the bat mounted in my vise with my favorite piece of scrap leather to hold it in the pipe teeth inside down here. Um, and that's just resting on there. And then the lag bolt's gonna go there and there. And then I'll just do that four times. And when I'm done, we'll have an assembled weapon and we'll be finished. Um, and this is gonna have, I like this back. It's got a nice patina on it. It's older. Again, I don't know where I got it from. I may have picked this up at a yard sale, but it's easy 30 years ago. So I can't tell you when. Um, so now it's gonna come to the assembly point and then all these nasty blowouts from the drill bits will be hidden. Um, when you film, finally you fin assemble your project, you can hide a myriad of sins, like the hole that doesn't belong where it is. Remember how I said sometimes things don't work out the way you plan? Well, I've got two of these things on there. Awesome. Beautiful. I really like them. Problem. This will not contact the bat, which means the holes are in the wrong place. If I hook it here, the holes are in the wrong place. And I don't want to drill new holes because I can't, they're too close. So what I'm going to have to do is something I didn't think I was going to do is I'm going to cut off here and here and then here because I want to leave a little section in the middle to grab the back because that's the location process. Not to mention it's going to increase the structural integrity and keep it from turning. So I would just, I want that this section to be contacting the bat hit, the top of the bat. So I'm going to have to cut this and this and then this and this on two of these brackets, which means I need to go upstairs and change my shoes because these are my new shoes and I do not want to turn my new shoes into what my old shoes look like because I melted my old shoes with sparks. So since I'm going to be at the cut metal now, I'm going to uh, go change my shoes, make some marks and then grind some cut and cut some and grind some metal. Didn't think I was gonna have to do that, but I do. Live and learn. Alrighty, there we go. So I cut the two corners the course off of each of these two brackets so they now fit between here. Um, I did not file or anything those, and this one is not perfectly even. It was my first try. The second one came out nicer. Um, live and learn. Um, so that now fits in there perfect. It catches on here so that it sets the, the distance from here to here is now the same, which puts the holes in the right location so that my lag bolts with my uh, washers hold everything together. And I did get lucky, I did not have any uh, in interference with these because, well, these two up here, they're on the straight section of the barrel of the, of the bat. So I really wasn't worried about those meeting in the middle because again, the tips are tapered. So I didn't think they were gonna be a problem and they weren't, but I lucked out they aren't a problem down here either. Um, I didn't measure it exactly, so it was an open, an open question. But the fix on that one was simple. I would have just taken the lag bolts and ground the tips off because I don't really need the tips because I drew, I drilled pilot holes. So the tips of the lag bolts actually aren't doing anything. I can lock that though, so I didn't have to. And because of the way this is designed, these are conforming to the slope. So there's actually, this up here is a little narrower than this down here. And I noticed that when I was working on these things, I took the bat out of this, out of the vise and put it over and over out of the way because I didn't want to, this to interfere with me working. Because take my word for it, if there's a way I can hurt myself on something, I will hurt myself on something. And I noticed that I can actually mount stack this vertically. This stands on its own, just on the ground like that. So I'm not gonna have to put this any place. When I'm done with this build, I can just stand it on the floor. Um, but yeah, this came out really nice. This is just, this is just so awesome looking. This thing is nasty looking. So now it's going to be outside for some photos, which I'll be putting up on my DeviantArt, on my Instagram, and of course, tacked on to the end of this video. Uh, I think I'm probably going to call this a toothed war club. That sounds like a, a good thing. It's not quite, it's not quite the, like the wolf's tooth club is a, a thing on its own. I don't want to and I don't want to diminish the, the, the provenance of that particular um, uh, weapon. So we're just going to call this a tooth to war club. And it, it is a heavy hitter and it is going to do damage no matter where it lands. There isn't any 
There isn't any soft, comfy points on this thing. It's all edge and danger. Um, just, just getting this in place, I could feel just the burrs on this thing because it was stamped out um, by some kind of machine, a uh, dedicated machine. So they must have made a lot of these things. I would love to know where these brackets came from. These, these cleats. I would love to know what the heck they are for because I got to think that they were designed to bolt into something and then wood bit into it because you wouldn't have this kind of a cleat in my mind unless you were going to bite into something and the most likely thing you're going to bite into is going to be wood. So I have no idea what they are but boy is it damn nasty looking. I am very happy with this build. So outside pictures and then we're done. Then I get to go upstairs and Cook some chicken because it's the day I cook chicken for the week and it's really hot. I'm not looking forward to that, but you got to do what you got to do. Um, so thank you for being here for this we weapons build. I hope that you will be here for the next one and who knows what the next one's going to be. Well, I kind of sort of know what the next one, well, the next crafting one I think is going to be a non-weapon, but after that's going to be another weapon because the next one, if I can pull it off, is going to be allow me to fasten things together in weapon builds in a new way other than using bolts and lag bolts and things like that. So I'm going to try to be opening up some new horizons for building weapons and attaching things to each other. And that's going to take a, uh, a crafting project in and of itself. Alrighty. Thanks for being here and I hope you'll be here again.